Everyone on the road is afraid of these cameras, which is why some people are breaking the law. Drivers are dreading it. The new tolls are intended to reduce traffic through Midtown and Lower Manhattan. Some drivers either cover up or tamper with their plates to avoid paying for tolls. At one point, I got a ticket with a white BMW with the same exact plate as me. Turns out, similar plates on a white BMW were tampered with. The 8 was made to look like a 3. There's going to be an added cost on top of everything else. Just don't see the reasoning behind it. Everything already is super high right now with inflation. We have seen news reports on people shielding their license plates and getting away with murder. Driving in Manhattan is about to get a lot more expensive for law-abiding drivers with legal cars. Congestion pricing, yay or nay? No, no, no. It costs us a lot of money, brother. I know, it is. God bless. So after months of delay, the MTA has finally released their pricing schedule for the congestion pricing scheme they've been taking a long time to come up with and have finally gotten ready to unleash upon the city. And not only is this concerning to average New Yorkers who may not be able to afford the tolls, it's also concerning to city officials who think that toll evasion could skyrocket and torpedo this whole plan before it even starts. Drivers who enter Manhattan south of 60th Street would be charged once a day. Here's the breakdown. Passenger vehicles would be charged $15. Plus the fees can be raised on days when there's heavy traffic, which I'm sure will not contribute to road rage. Yes. You think people are happy about it? Yes no, or no? no? Not at all? It's the worst thing. And the toll area is massive. It's everything south of 60th Street all the way down to the water. That's a massive area of Manhattan and it's called the Central Business District. Why would you put a toll in the middle of the city? We understand people got to come from Jersey. People got to come from Westchester or wherever they got to come from. So to put a toll on both ends, it ain't fit. The good news is that the fees are just going to be once a day, it looks like. There will also be discounts for entering the zone during off-peak hours and for drivers with low income. And off-peak, the fares could drop to as little as 75% off. It sounds like an incredible deal, doesn't it? 75% off. But already in New York, up to 10,000 cars a day are bypassing the tolls that already exist. Illegally. Scanners like these will determine the congestion price by reading vehicle license plates. That's if the plates can be read. On Friday, our cameras found vehicles with plates in dark tinted covers and a number of vehicles with no plates at all. So it seems that some drivers have figured out a way around the tolls that are assessed with these plate readers. These cameras work by reading your license plate. But what if it's not there? This brand new BMW, no license plates, and it's in the congestion zone. No plates under the windshield. I don't see anything here, that's crazy. This here motorcycle definitely does not have a license plate. Look at that, no plate on this thing whatsoever. Look at that one, way underneath that truck, under the lift gate, I can't even see that. Or what if it's covered or obscured or there's a little excess mud on it? You'd technically be saving money on the tolls, until you get caught, that is. But traffic camera evasions exploded over the last few years. In 2019, only about 1% of cars had plates that couldn't be read, but now that's up to about 4%. And these cameras, they're not even active yet. And look at this picture of this bent up license plate. Experts say that this could be intentional so that the plate can't be read properly. And proponents of the congestion pricing are worried that this kind of thing is gonna explode and become even more common. Toll evading remains a problem for the MTA and law enforcement. During a ride along with MTA officials in April, the transit agency outlined various kinds of illegal plates from James Bond-like technology of rotating plates to multiple ways of obscurement, thereby shielding them from police, bridge and tunnel tolls, red light, and speed cameras. So it seems like every vehicular rebel out there has their own little scheme for how they're gonna get around the tolls. Now in New York, it's a crime to cover or obscure your license plate. It's gotta be visible. And you can even report offenders to 311 if you want to. But look at this, a quick Amazon shirt search shows that these plate covers what possible justification is there for a tinted license plate cover there's no way that's legal but the sneakiest drivers of all have another way to get around the whole license plate reader thing and it might be the worst one of them all the 
either they use a plastic shield that has some sort of like a pixelated finish on it, or they simply turn an E into an F or an 8 into a 0 by painting in a tiny bit of the plate with the same matching color. So the sneakiest method of all is some people will alter their license plate so that when it gets picked up by a reader, it reads something different than what the plate actually says. And what's crazy about that is it might look like a legitimate plate to the toll reader or to a police car that scans the plate. And to criminals, this is definitely preferable to just removing the plate. Does the post office need to have a plate? Either way, the toll reader will read something and then it'll just get an error because there's nowhere to send the ticket because that plate doesn't exist. But what happens if you change your plate to read and it becomes someone else's plate? Then what happens? Or what if someone steals your license plate and then runs a bunch of tolls with it? At one point, I got a ticket from New Jersey Easy Pass with a white BMW with the same exact plate as me. Turns out, similar plates on a white BMW were tampered with. The eight was made to look like a three, meaning Roses was being charged for tolls and tickets he didn't amass. Man, that totally sucks. And that goes to show you that toll evasion is not a victimless crime. Think of all the time and stress that person had to waste figuring out that somebody else had essentially stolen their plate number without stealing their plate and was running tolls on their behalf. Plus, look at this. In New York, they can actually suspend your vehicle's registration if you don't pay tolls. That means you can't have your car on the road anymore. But if you do have a fake plate like the driver in that video did, they can track you down because they know what the original plate is and they can figure out that, yeah, these two plates are pretty similar. This person probably has an altered plate. And because of that plate paper trail, some criminals have decided to do something even sneakier. And what they essentially do is create a fake registration number and a fake temporary plate. And a plate like that is what's known as a ghost plate because it doesn't actually exist. Now, temporary license plates do serve a valid legal purpose. If you buy a car, you need some sort of plate on it so that you can drive it on the road. But once these guys catch you breaking these laws, you're gonna understand why it's a good idea not to break them at all in the first place. Here we are at the local impound lot, also known as car jail. If you're bad, they're gonna take your car and that's where it goes. Like this car right here, getting towed into the lot by an NYPD tow truck. If there's a ghost car, they're gonna catch it and put it in here. Now, if your car ends up in here, it's extremely expensive because you have to pay all of the fees that brought your car there in the first place and all of the fees that take place once it's inside. Parking tickets, speeding tickets, tolls that are unpaid, all that stuff. And once the car's inside, you got storage, $20 a day, plus the towing fee. So two things to pay, the towing fee is 185 bucks. And apparently the NYPD finds 5,500 ghost cars a year. Those are cars with a plate that doesn't exist. And in 2021, they arrested more than 3,000 people for crimes in connection with ghost cars. And even though toll evasion in New York City was already a problem, it could get even worse once the congestion pricing kicks in. And that's because if you commute five days a week, that $15 toll is gonna add up to almost $4,000 over the course of the year. And not only are some New Yorkers unable to pay that fee, others simply have no choice. This here is your typical ancient New York City apartment building and it's really worn out. And it needs to be fixed up. There's even some work permits on the building because someone's in the process of doing something in here. And how do you think these types of buildings get fixed? Not by someone carrying a paintbrush on the subway, that's for sure. Most of the work that gets done in these requires equipment, like what you'd find inside this plumbing and heating work truck right here. Now everyone's gotta live somewhere, and in order for your apartment to get repaired, you're gonna need a team of people to do it, but that truck right there is gonna get stuck paying the congestion charges and the problem is they can't bring all that equipment through the subway there's just no way to bring pipes saws wrenches all the stuff that you need to do a job right and it's not just plumbing paint drywall electrical repair here's another good example they do air conditioning boiler repair all kinds of stuff there's another plumber across the street and all these parked vehicles over here they're all work vans of some kind anyone doing real work is going to need real equipment and it's going to be real heavy even a big five gallon jug of paint that's pretty heavy try lifting one of those in fact the trains are so packed and unreliable there's barely enough room on them even for a 
person. And there's no way to bring large pieces of equipment or anything in an environment like that anywhere and have it not get broken. Now, yes, the corporate employee who does all their work on a laptop, they can take the train and not lose any of their equipment or have any problems, but not the plumber, no. And when you consider how all these little businesses are gonna be affected by these prices, or by the cost of these tolls, rather, it makes sense that people are upset and concerned. But work vehicles aren't even the worst example. How do you think this skid of bananas got here? These are wrapped and strapped to a skid which needs to be picked up by a forklift. And you can't bring a forklift on the subway either. Dino Redzik is a chef and restaurant owner in Manhattan. In idealism, it may work. But in reality, it will not because it will always affect middle class to poor class. We would try so hard not to affect the consumer. I mean, how much can you charge for pasta? But you have to factor in rent, uh, utility bills, and now you have to figure out and get smart around. Think about that. If you own a business that sells anything that needs to get here by a truck, like one of these little restaurants over here, you're gonna have to raise your prices, but you might not be able to forever. And that's because everything inside the restaurant got there from a truck somehow. And let's say you're a distributor, like whoever's operating this little seafood truck right here, you got 12 of these things roaming around the city. They're all refrigerated so the food doesn't spoil. They've all gotta pay the congestion toll. You're looking at thousands of dollars extra a week. And bigger vehicles like these guys over here that are distributing food, they've gotta pay an even higher higher toll. Literally, you've got thousands of pounds of inventory inside every single one of these things. Same thing with furniture. Look at that, all the furniture in these apartments. Taking the subway, taking the bus, trying to ride a city bike, totally out of the question. Trucks actually pay $24 a day, not the 15 that cars get charged, yet they could be delivering vital resources. The guy with his little laptop, he could work from home. He probably prefers to work from home. Man, he can take the train. But food? Do we really want our food to cost more money? Because if our food does end up costing more, it means the congestion pricing tolls are something all of us pay, not just those of us who drive. What do you think? Are they a good idea? Are they going to lessen congestion? Is that going to be a greater benefit to New York? And what should happen to the 10,000 people a day who are already evading New York City's tolls illegally? Should there be harsher punishments for covering up your license plate? Let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next video.